Ay, def nañ lu neex amuñ morom ñu ngi def sande di len gëreem ñaata yees ñu ngi tok diar bu dem afkon ñu wara dem di sia o bro dañ happy dañ happy kor ga dañ over happy man yele ngeen all right um i'm i'm afraid i'm afraid we're now join my colleagues in the studio aliou and the rest of the team in the studio but so far so good it's a historic day for gambia and gambians are coming out from all over the place to join us here over to you aliou Asmara is on Yasi right there at the Independence Stadium in the, in Bakau. What a day, a historic day in in the Gambia, a historic day in the Gambia. This day 25th of March will go down in the history books of the country. A day when the Gambia qualified for its major African tournament 2022 in Cameroon. Mr. Ade, how do you feel today? <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> when I heard that the match was over and this is no lie, I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck. Morris have given us the signal let's go on and win this game let's qualify absolutely thrilled absolutely absolutely thrilling <laughs> a quite crucial a crucial game for the Gambia it was we saw even though the game was played behind closed doors but mm. fans had to come and win outside knowing the fact that this game this yes. game was very important for the country and we saw Gabon winning 3-0 <laughs> uh, amazing I mean you know Gabon were almost saying to us look we're doing what we have to do we are putting out <laughs> work for you <laughs> you, so do, do you, do, you do the rest <laughs> And, and we did the rest. And as you said, you know, fans gathered outside the stadium. That's to be expected. I mean, if none had gathered, then, you know, I would have been very surprised. And let me just say this. Had this been even at the height of protocol uh, restrictions, people would still have turned out because it is historic. People want to say, I was there. They can't see the players. They didn't touch them, but they want to be as close as they can to them. At some point, we were running, running out of peace. And there was so much frustration, especially after the first half ending, goalless, and then we were going into the second half. Until the second minute of the game, when we saw Asan Sisi finally breaking the deadlock. Uh, that's right. They, they you, you, uh, could, you could, you could uh, see the feelings in the newsroom. I mean, everybody was uh, just jubilating. Uh, you know, I almost wish we had a camera on our staff. <laughs> we were watching the game, and there was just an explosion of joy because it looked like the keeper had saved it. But of course, he hadn't. And then Asan just moved in and knocked in the rebound. Absolutely brilliant. And it was just explosive. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have been following <laughs> Gambian football, you will realize that the performance of the boys in this in this campaign has been so much brilliant. I mean, ten points out of almost five games. Well, right. Saturday, how, yes. how will you how, how will you rate the performance of the, of the, of the Scorpions? I mean, yeah. we lose only one game. Well, that's right. I mean, when I was speaking about this on, um, I think it was Q Sports with, with Gajaga, I said what we have to do is seize this moment because we've got a really talented crop of players, and they are good enough to not only qualify. But I think to qualify and actually go there and you know cause a bit of a stir. It's a really good team and a really good squad. Indeed, quite historic mm -hmm. for everybody who has been following Gambian football. Not only for the fans, even the players, the federation, the executive, and even the leadership of this country, the government, the president. This is a historic moment for the entire country. You know, many people will be taking different things out of this. Let's think of Coach Tom Sanfier. I mean, he will be. They, they say you know, success is the best revenge. When you qualify, all his critics, he can say to them, eat your words. You know, I've done what I was hired to do. I have got the team to qualify for his first ever AFCON. And then once that has happened, then, you know, hey, what can they say? You know, he's done the job. He will say, this is what I was hired to do, and I've done it. And so, yeah, I absolutely thrilled for him. The, the federation for hiring him, but let's not forget, when he was hired, there were a lot of criticism. Why this guy? He hasn't got much of a track record anywhere. Why have you hired him and not somebody else? But he's come and he has proved the point that he knows what he was doing. And, you know, he's been criticized for his squad selections, for all sorts of things. But the team have gone and they have done it. They've done exactly what they were asked to do, which is to qualify and to qualify in some fashion. The match was tense. It was tight. But games like this are always like that. You know, they never smooth following football. You don't expect that in the game. But they did what they had to do. They had to get a result and they got a result. And that is exactly all you can ask of them, really. So I'm really thrilled. And I'm thrilled for the FA, uh, for the operation. I'm thrilled for the coach. I'm thrilled for the players. And of course, beyond all, I am thrilled for the country. This is a great day. And I'm glad to say I was here and I watched it, even though, as you say, we could not be there in the stadium to see the thing unfold. Absolutely terrific day. And uh, onwards and upwards from here. Uh, it would be good to hear from some of the players, you know, when one can get a chance. But I think, you know, our colleagues who are out on the streets, 
it will be good for them to get and to gauge the reaction of people out on the streets as to what exactly is happening. Uh, Gambians, historic moment. Yeah. Uh, let me talk to her as well, Sister Nangare. Every time I'm also busy, I'm busy for African news. I'm busy. 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 i am Fine, fine, thank you. I'm an Abdullah Bagura. I'm going to say Ransi Maj Bifite. Wow, because I'm part of the football, you know, of, of uh, uh, federation. Because I'm, 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 I'm part of the, one of the committee members, uh, uh, you know, three committees. As a Gambian, Langa Yekte. Oh, Yek 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 and win those, uh, won those trophies, you know. So, so the guy said, "Yeg yeg bima amon, we qualify now with that cup of nation." Ah, burau bula amni tay because of, you know, this is the senior national team. Musufe musuda am, you know. So tay, so ame, you know, mbete bo hamne la amut amut na fa jegi da, you know. Amwa. So limoi 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 development and limoi limoi limo limoi one heart, you know. So, meaning, you know, football with Nakani, you know, Sui Hale, you get Gurgur, Ruba, Baba, you send more of me, you've them, you find them. So, when you judge for the Buba, I'm a DGF, they've done a very good job with their efforts and their, you know, their management to make sure that you know, you manage things properly. Put team, team Bimunabu, you know, 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 a biri biri, the Jado C says the Ibu Silas, I mean the Mustafa Tuabo judges, and of course the Father Laos and the other, I mean, legends of Gambian football. But I mean I could see Dr. Cesar here as well. Um, and I would engage him shortly. Doctor, how do you feel? Well, lovely, amazing. I don't have any words to describe this feeling. Uh, it's a one-off feeling. It will never happen again. It's the first time and it's the last time. Because we'll never qualify again for the first time. This is the only time we are going to qualify for this first time. So maybe when we qualify for the World Cup, it's going to be another feeling. But for now, it's, ecstatic, it's ecstatic. It is great. We congratulate the boys. We commend the government for the support. Uh, what, message, the and the financial support. what message do you have for the boys in particular? Let them stay focused and continue with the discipline. Why, the only reason why they came this far is because of the discipline, the harmony they have within the team, the belief they have in, them, in themselves. Let them continue with that spirit of discipline, of dedication, of love for country, of being focused on what they are doing. And I think... One day, when they do that, we are going to Cameroon and we are going to do wonders. And after that, we are going to qualify for the World Cup. Well, we are all hoping. And uh, of course, uh, le let, me, let me also engage another football veteran, Uncle Nangaref. 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 Nangaref.
kontan na be fu kontan em ñun ñepp tray nañ be sona mënu ñoo dem xalé yi tay ñu yobbu ñu alhamdullilah rabbil alamin li lum la fateli tay di mënu ma wax bro jërëjëf jërëjëf mënu ma wax ndesan holam holama fess holama fess my guys my bro hey, man, how are you <laughs> you good um how do you feel today bro yeah i'm really happy man i mean this is such a very great achievement i will say i mean um it is our generation of course and i will say thank you to the government more especially to um bakari baji he has done a lot for the team because i have a friend inside so uh, i've heard of what he has done for the team so so yeah i'm extremely happy and bravo to all gamins this this is a great you know i mean achievement for you for me for everyone absolutely it's, it's, an an so it's, it's a great achievement for everybody the fans are now coming in cheering running The security is just can't stop them. You just cannot stop these people. They are so so happy this evening. Um let me engage my brother here as well. Um bro bro Omar. Gis nga fancy. Gis nga nit ñi. Um lan nga yekte. Ah té mom kañ content nañ torop. Content nañ torop. Wow, content nañ torop. History has been made. So by hell Gambia have been trying for so many years. Xam nga. So in the whole of West Africa ñun rek ño jota qualify so def nañu street tay content nañ torop honestly content nañ torop and thanks for the coach tay so amon message pour boy lan la mo nek ah well di len over press nak i think i don't have any single message or word to describe today's xam nga best bi nu mel xam nga ay munu ma jël ben word wonde di len over press the great team wo buñ def unity bu nek sen digante na lolu continuer content nañ torop honestly content nañ torop history has been made well indeed history has been made Um it is a historic moment and like I said earlier on a day like this we remember Gambia's footballing legends the Biribiris the Mustafa Tuabo Jajus the Father Louses and of course a host of other Gambia's footballing legends but one man whose name will not be easily forgotten is Asan Sisse who got us the goal that qualified us to Cameroon 2022 it's a historic day for this country And of course Gambians from all over the country are coming in they are celebrating Assalamu alaikum uncle Nangadev Alaikum salam Alaikum salam Lan nga yektay Ha Lan nga yektay Um contente contente in top for the first time Gambia qualified trying to unnek before and uh Well, thank you very much, uh, Eso Nyasi, my colleague there at the Independence Stadium, sounding the opinions of jubilating Gambians after Gambia uh, secured its maiden qualification to Afcon tournament, of course, at the senior level. We've been qualifying in the junior categories, Mr. Ade, but today, like you have heard from uh, some of those uh, fans who are actually at the, at the Independence Stadium, expressing how happy they are saying the Gambia qualifying to the next Afcon tournament. What do you think should be the next move now? I mean, the next move has to be to actually bring the team together. I think we have to understand. I uh, understand the coach is about to face the ah, press. We will now go back to the Independence Stadium, where my colleague Modu Gajaga is on standby. Gajaga.
the best ever. The government, the support they did. I never experienced this. So, Yamians, start to be proud. I know we have a culture of criticizing and being jealous, maybe. But be happy. You are in seven, eight months on AFCOM. You, we can compete with the best for the first time in history. Thanks to the president of the federation who appointed me, who supported me. Thanks to the committee. Thanks to everyone in the federation. Everyone, from the kit manager to the media officer. Everyone, from the medical team. Everyone, to the government who supports us in everything. But most of all, and I, do, I forget something, the fans, they are not here. But remember, Algeria game, Congo game, we want that back. We want that we have the bigger, that we need a bigger stadium. We competed the last two years with the best in Africa. No one of all these teams, Algeria, Morocco, Guinea, Gabon, Angola, DRC, no one, no one was better than us. No one can beat us. So we have a small step taken, but we want more. We have good players who are not selected, who get chances in the near future. We have good players in the under 20, who will get chances in the near future. The next years, Gambia can compete with the best. And support, don't criticize. Because I cannot select every player. Understand that. But we win together. Also, you are part of this victory. And I have to thank you. The last thank you, thank you I have to say to my family, my wife and my beautiful daughter who support me day in and out, who are stressed, my father, the rest of the family. So everyone is part of this. But the biggest thanks to all the players because they did something in 40 years Gambian football. How good the players were in the past. It's not the best player, it's the best team. These boys are a team who die for the country. So I think we can be proud. Let's look forward. Let's build forward. We have reached something. But I said we are satisfied, but we want more. The coming months, we're going to prepare. This outcome will be the first. We will learn. We will see how far we go. Let's take it step by step. But the coming years, we want more. Thank you very much. We have not finished. The, 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 the press conference has not finished, please. It is a special day, and I want to uh, just remind ourselves that let us not go high. And uh, that we cannot repeat ourselves the same kind of question. And not each and every one can ask a question. Let us avoid repetition, please. All right? Yes, we have I'm not the man. We are all we are all the man. If the president didn't appoint me, if the federation didn't support me, if the government didn't assist me, if my players didn't kick the ball in the goal or defend the goal, we are one team. It's not one man. I can't do it without Ali Tishad, Ali Ali Maron, Rido Berdi, without my medical team, with my technical team. I can't do anything without Usman Duhamel. I'm part of this group. I'm a part of the chain. I'm responsible. Journalists shoot at me. I'm standing in front of my players to get the hits in my face, and I'm standing behind my players to push them and support them. But I'm part of the team. Yes, so this is the first time, because there have been so many African countries, so this is the first time, including for the team and part of the country. How did you feel? Uh, in, in 2016, my qualification got stolen because I was with seven points after four games, exactly like now, and I had two games to play against Djibouti and Liberia with Togo, and we needed four points to be qualified, and I had beat Gambia had all the quality to do it. So I'm not surprised. This is why I came here for. I didn't came for money. I accepted very little salary because I know I had fantastic federation and players. So, and a beautiful football loving country. And I said, this is the first time, but not the last time. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. You targeted to qualify. Now that you qualify to the tournament so far, what is your target? We try always to win every game. 
And if we achieve that, we can reach four. I think now we have to analyze, develop, get some players in friendlies. But when we go to AFCO, it's our first time, it depends on the draw. Because you can have a very tough draw, easy draw. But I think we have to see. Sure, the aim must be second round. And let's see how far we can go. Hopefully, we can surprise more. Mohamed, yeah, final question. Final question. Well, that's it. It's, 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 they are speaking to Gambian press after uh, a 1 0 win against, against Angola, which has secured the Gambian East Maiden qualification to the AFCON tournament next year in Cameroon. Well, I am glad to say that uh, we are happily joined by the President of the Republic, His Excellency President Adam Abaro. Uh, who is also a football fan, by the way, he's an Arsenal fan. Your Excellency, thank you so much for speaking to us. Welcome to this live broadcast. Your Excellency? Hello? Yes, Your Excellency, thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, welcome to this live, live broadcast. How do you feel witnessing the Gambia qualifying to its maiden Afghan tournament? But the line is not good. I'm not hearing you clearly. Your Excellency, are you getting me? Yes, I'm hearing you, but the, the, the voice is very, very low. Can I hear you very good? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, Your Excellency. Yeah, yes, now no, it's, it's, it's coming up now. Yeah. One, wonderful, Your Excellency. Thank you so much for speaking to us here on this live broadcast after a historic day in, in Gambian football. The Gambia has finally qualified to its maiden Afghan tournament. Being the President of the Republic, how do you feel at this moment? Uh, thank you very much for correcting me on the line. I am really excited. I am happy. I am on holidays in Mankamakunda, but I was following the match online. Uh, I think everybody is happy. Uh, exactly the same with me and my family. We are all very, very happy. But I will seize this opportunity to thank the team, the captain, uh, the coach, the management, and the entire GFA and the Gambian people. This is a great day in the history of this country. I think we waited so long, and I'm a big football fan. I have been following football since in the 70s. Yeah, we have the Biri, the Laos, you understand, the Keva Dias and the others. But we tried and tried and tried. We were not able to succeed in uh, qualifying for the African Cup of Nations. But this is the first time we are qualifying for African Cup of Nations. I think this is great, and this is big in the history of this country. We will never forget this day. But we are encouraging the boys to remain as a team. I think the teamwork is very, very important. And uh, if, if you are patient, the, mo the most patient dog is the most fat bond. I think that is key and it's important. Well, like, like you said, you've been following football from the days of Biri Biri and, and many of us. And then you said it's, it's quite historic for the country today. What do, do you think has made this difference seeing the Gambia qualified today? I think the difference is the boys were able to work together. I think they were also very, very patient. And the Gambian people were also behind them. And the entire government. This is the first time that Gambia is hiring aeroplanes for our footballers, for our, for our sportsmen. I think there was a big encouragement and there was support. People were together as far as the team is concerned. I think in the football there is no politics. That's why we are, we are all united. We are all behind the team. I think that is why the boys we are able to succeed today. But we have to thank them for the hard work. So what do you think is, should, be, should be the next move now, now that we have qualified to the AFCON tournament? Preparations are expected to commence soon. So what our, assurance our are you giving to the team? Is, let us remain together. Let us all support the team, government and the entire Gambian people. And the team also remain as a team. Teamwork is very, very important. But we want to assure them that with our support from government, the sky is the limit. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. That's uh, the President of the Republic, His Excellency Adam Abaro. They are speaking to us from his uh, hometown of Manka Mankunda. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Well, it, Mr. Ade, you, you, you had the President. They are speaking to us from his home village of Manka Mankunda. Quite a soaring statement there from him. Yes, indeed. And I think he echoed something that uh, Tom Sanfia said, which was that we are a team. And uh, Tom went on to actually say, Everybody mattered. Kitman, the uh, you know the physio, uh, everybody, backroom staff, 
the president, the, the federation, everybody has been very, very supportive of him. And he said without all that support from everybody, this would not have been achieved. And I'm glad he said that because it is true. Teamwork can actually make a difference. Well, I'm afraid Tijan Jaite, a uh, uh, sports ambassador of the government, is also uh, speaking to my colleague, Modi Gajaga. Uh, cool. Okay, I understand he, he's gone. Yes, y y y you uh, were saying something, uh, trying well, to echo well, what, yes, what Tom I mean, was saying. What Tom was saying, and you know, he, he mentioned this thing about one Gambia, and he said even though the fans were not there today, he said the support that they've gotten from the fans in the games when fans were allowed actually made a huge difference to the team. And I think when, you're, when you have that kind of support, even if the fans are not there, you can almost feel them. <laughs> and so they become that 12th man, you know, that people talk about this cliche in football, the 12th man. I think they felt that the whole of the nation was behind them. And I think that's what drove them on today. And, and it's, it's like the, 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 the common saying that sports is, is a unifying tool has been demonstrated. You saw the, the, uh, uh, the opposition uh, CA leader, Dr. Cesar was at the, at the stadium as well. He was there, he was excited, <laughs> uh, you know, and he was, uh, in, uh, on a day like today, he was an ordinary Gambian. Even though he couldn't get in the stadium yeah. to actually see the match, he wanted to be there with other Gambians celebrating this. And uh, we're going to use this word till people are bored of hearing it, historic day. It is an historic day. It's quite historic, <laughs> like the cliche, this is the time to <laughs> criticize and being jealous. It's time for, for everyone to celebrate. Quite, imp quite significant day for, for, the, for the country. I mean, like you said, I mean, this is something that is, is significant, not only for, for, for football fans but even you know politicians you know uh, the, the executive of the federation and, and even the president of the republic who has just uh, spoken to us he's, a, as, he's an arsenal fan though Indeed. but uh, he's quite elated that you know finally what many have been waiting for is finally here it's here and also i think what you're going to be hearing in the next day or two or maybe the next week or so is you hear people dedicating this win to people like biri biri, biri, biri. you know this man he, he took gambian football to heights on dreamt of and unfortunately, he's not here to see a day like today. And I must say, when the match was about to end, that was the first thought that came to my mind. What a pity Biri Biri is not here to see this historic day. Because I know he spoke to you, and he was quite conf you know, convinced that one day this day would come from this particular team. I, I, indeed, I mean, I, I've interacted with Biri Biri, you know, f few occasions actually before he got he fell sick and you know passed away, and then he he was one of those people who actually had you know hope in in, in mm. this squad going by the performance of of the team in in the previous two games at the start of this campaign, and then it is good that today I mean Gambia has has made it. Uh, to the Afghan tournament. But many would say that, okay, Gambia, despite being a footballing nation, uh, the state of, of, of sporting facilities is, is something that is a concern. What do you think uh, these things will tell us now as far as sports development is concerned? I think, you know, um, people who know me, they get bored of hearing me talk about Jamaica in terms of sports. And if you see the sports infrastructure in Jamaica, um, it's not a big island particularly, even though it's bigger than some of the other islands. But the amount of money and resources that government and business put into sport. It's not just about government, you know, because Jamaica's profile through sports has been raised to heights uh, that's unimaginable. And I would say to big business here in the Gambia, invest in sports, invest in, in infrastructure, invest in the teams, invest in the players, sponsor the players, sponsor sporting grounds to actually raise the game to heights and let people see football as a potential career. So we stop people going the back way. You know, let them see if I have a talent in football, that talent can take me to places, you know, I'll end up playing for Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, the likes. That is what we want big business to do. Let them seize this opportunity and not lose it. B by the way, we, we have seen the, the current government introducing the sports levy on GSM operators just to make sure so they are able to develop most of these sporting facilities. As we speak, uh, so many ministries are being built across the country under this current government from the, you know, the revenue collected uh, from this sports levy, which is quite commendable. And, and, and like you said, I mean, gradually, I mean, we will get there. We will get there. But what I, I find disappointing, and you know, on a day like today, it's not a day for criticism, but we have to be blunt and we have yeah. to be honest. There's the FIFA forward money. It runs into millions. The likes of the Gambia have only taken a fraction, have only taken rather, a fraction of the millions they're entitled to have taken up to now to develop the sport in this country. Why have they not done so? They should be doing that. And if they delve into that money and show that they can account for it properly, I'm telling you, they will take football to a whole different level in this country. Indeed, quite important, you know, 
the spending of those resources that are coming from FIFA and CAF towards football development, it is something that many people will, will, will expect to see that from going forward, I mean, these resources are, are well spent, even though the federation or the executive will tell you they are spending in the right way. But then compared to other countries like Mauritania, I mean, where, where you have seen the facilities, I mean, uh, we, we hope, I mean, now we have this uh, FIFA gold project in Yundum, we, we hope to see most of these facilities upgraded to a standard whereby you don't even need to take the national team to a hotel, they can all come there and have, have everything in, in in, in that place. Absolutely right. You and I watched the football in Mauritania and we were really impressed with the facilities. And when you looked online, you saw that they had actually taken some of this FIFA money to develop the infrastructure, which so impressed us. That's what the Gambia needs to do. And that's what the Federation needs to do. Yeah, it's, it's, yes, l like you said, I mean, I, I know fans are still at the, at the, in, at, at the Independence <laughs> Stadium jubilating. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be a long night for the country. I oh mean, including yes. the president himself, who is, uh, who is currently at Makava Kunda. So I know today he might even organize a barbecue. We know the bottle of Kundas and, and, and food. So Your Excellency, please organize a big barbecue for your family. It's a, it's a big day for the country, and then people have to celebrate. I think this is a day to celebrate and this is a day to actually throw some restrictions <laughs> out of the window. You know, just for this one day, exactly. just for this one day, because w football can do this to you. Yeah. It can give you the kind of joy that is, is, is unimaginable. And honestly, this is a great day and you can tell I'm losing my voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I understand the, 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 the people are still at the Independence Stadium celebrating, jubilating, you know, praising the boys for that heroic performance today. I mean, even though at some point, you know, we were lose, going out of pace and frustration was, was gradually, you know, coming in. But then finally, as and sister, you know, broke the deadlock and then Gambia is now going to the Afghan tournament quite historic day for, for, for most of these players, especially these players who actually played in this game. It's going going down in, 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 in their history as, as footballers that, you know, we played that game when actually Gambia qualified. Yeah, exactly <laughs> say I scored the goal that took us to, uh, exactly. you, you know. So it's, 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 it's quite historic. But, but like you said, uh, you talk about the issue of the fans coming from FIFA and, and, and CAF just to make sure, you know, grassroots football is sports is developed, football in particular, even though we know in the Gambia, football is the most dominant sports, but we also have other sporting disciplines okay. that are doing well. I mean, yeah. they like basketball, volleyball, yeah. you know, para Paralympics, they're all doing great. So, uh, like you said, it's something that the government should really answer, especially through the Ministry of and Sports, that all these funds are wisely spent to answer that, you know, people, you know, make best use of, of, of this. Because like you said, yeah. you always t tell us, um, football is no more a, a lesser, it's, it's a business, yeah. and you, you should be willing to invest to, 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 to get results. And you reap the results, yeah. and uh, other countries have reaped the results. And again, sorry to bore people, but you know, I imagine in 2016, albeit only for six months, Cape Verde, which is the smallest country in terms of population on the African continent, yes. we're not in Africa. Uh, well, I, I understand my colleague, Asumana Eso Nyasi, is <laughs> currently <laughs> on standby. So I, I, if, we, if, we, if, if you are getting me, it's all yours. Well, I'm afraid uh, I'm, I'm not getting my colleague Eso Nyasi, who is currently at the Independence Stadium, where you know we, we understand you know, people are k gradually gathering at the Independence Stadium just to celebrate with the boys. I mean, Mr. Ade. Just to feel this moment. I mean, uh, people who've been watching us on TV and they've seen that people are there will be rushing there now yeah. just to, to feel part of this great moment and say, you know, I remember this day. And honestly, we will all remember this for the rest of our lives because, uh, as uh, you know, Dr. Cisse said, <laughs> you know, you can only qualify for the first exactly, time once, yeah. you know, and that's it. And the next big one, we're not getting above ourselves, has to be obviously the World Cup. Well, let's go there and let's remember what Madagascar did at the last AFCON. They didn't win it, but by God, they were the team that everybody was talking out about when the, when the tournament ended. They, they went there as underdogs and they surprised most of these big guns. Nobody expected them to get out of the group stage and they went all the way to the semi-finals. I mean, it's quite remarkable. And, so and, you know, like you said, it's going to be a long night and I'm sure these, these Scorpions wouldn't get to their hotel, hotel anytime soon. I'm, uh, probably there could be a parade. Yes. You know, through going through Westfield just to, uh, so that, you know, they celebrate with people. And then, like you said, it's, it's, it's a big day for the country. And then it's something that so many Gambians have been waiting for. And like the president said uh, in, that, in that interview with us, I mean, he wants the team to remain united because unity is very important. They, there can't be any, any achievement in the absence of unity in, in, in a football team. Not only football team, but anywhere you go to.
anywhere you go to unity is very important. I think that unity has, has really helped in, in having us qualified to this tournament. For most of us who have been following the, the national team and, and at some point travel with, with the national team outside the country, wh what you used to see before and now are quite different. You're seeing so much unity among the players. Well, and then these are young it. talents who yeah. actually have a long way to go. And then That's I think right. it's, it's good. I was going to say, you've been the one asking the questions all along, but you've just said something which I was going to ask you about. For people like yourself who've been following uh, Gambian football for so long, and Gambia has had other decent teams. Sometimes the under-17s have never quite, you know, graduated to the senior team. Yes, I, un I understand my colleague Eso Nyasi is online. Uh, Ansumana, are you getting me? <laughs> well, it's all yours, Eso Nyasi. <laughs> Well, well, so if you're getting me, where is the team? Where is the team exactly as we speak? I'm asking, where is the team? Where are the Scorpios as we speak at the moment? What does this remind you, Ansumana? I mean, most of us, we, we, we recall the 2005 days when we used to occupy Westfield. Are you seeing any... So where are you heading from there? <laughs> well, that, that shouldn't be a surprise for anyone who, who knows, you know, how Gambians love football and then having the Gambia qualified to the African tournament. This shouldn't be, a, shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, all of us, we, you know, we, we were at, at traffic light at the moment, at the, at the Independence Stadium, joining in the celebration, Mr. Ade. Absolutely right. And I think uh, what we must expect is that that crowd is not going to go until they have seen their heroes, until the players come out and the crowd see them and give them the accolade that they deserve. I don't think that crowd is going to go. So I think at some point the players will have to come out. And even if it is just wave to the crowd, um, I think they need to do that. But one thing I must say that this victory has done is that I want Gambians to take this as a signal that this might be a small country, but that doesn't mean you have to think small. Because if these players thought small, they would never think we can qualify for AFCON. They would never think we would win these games. We would beat the likes of Angola. Look at the size of Angola, oil-rich Angola. <laughs> you know, which, which, which you know, is, is, is you know, the, the capital, Luanda, is, is the most expensive city in Africa to live in. Um, and we beat them. And we didn't beat them by cheating or anything. We beat them through teamwork, through hard work and sweat. I said, when you leave the pitch at the end of the day, leave every drop of sweat and no regrets. You come off saying, I gave my best. And those players did that today. 
and they got the just reward. Well, we hope uh, if they get to Cameroon, they will replicate what they did in the, in, the, in, the, in the last Under-17 World Cup where we beat Brazil in our opening game. And then, you know, that, that, that was the biggest shock of, of Gambian of Gambian football at the time, having the under under seventeen of Gambia beating big team like like, like Brazil. Team. Exactly. And just recently saying the team imagine, you know, returning home with, with, with bronze medal and all that. I think all these things are are signs that, you know, we really have talents. All that is needed is to ensure that, you know, there's that political will and there's that uh, investment into, into into resources to have, you know, most of these talents are, are groomed so that they can develop into, into professional footballers. I agree with you there. If there's one doubt cloud over this is that um, I think administration-wise, I know they're going to appeal the decision to disqualify them from the under-17 tournament um, when they said they were overage players. Yeah. But we need to get rid of that sort of thing because we don't need that. We have players talented enough to make the squad who aren't overage. And, you know, as I said, the, 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 the Federation has said they're going to appeal that decision to kick them out of that tournament. But honestly, the under-20s have shown us that, I mean, you know, they didn't win the tournament. They won bronze. But honestly, they were one of the best teams. Uh, you know, easy on the eye, played good, attractive football. And in two or three years' time, just think what those players can achieve if they stay together. And some of them might graduate to the senior team. Indeed. And, and if you look at this, despite, despite having all these talents, we've seen in the past most of these uh, talents will, will actually abandon the game and embark on the illegal migration because they have no hope that they will make it here. And like you said, I mean, sports is very important. You have, you have seen most of these uh, players who are really contributing to the economy of their country. So it's quite important that a lot is invested into, into, into sports. That a lot is invested and that we um, use this as something to inspire other young people to say, you know, think, you know, there's a whole techie fee, you know, you can make it yes. here in the Gambia. And uh, I think, you know, these players, I think they should go around to schools, to colleges and, and be inspirational figures. If they can't do it physically, do videos to inspire young people to say, look, you can do it, you can make it. It might come from the Gambia, a very small country, the smallest country on the African continent, but look what we've achieved. Nobody thought we could achieve this. If you'd said this five, six years ago, that Gambia would qualify for the, people would have laughed at you. And yet now, before this match and during the match, we were tense. Our colleague, Jennifer Sonko, she couldn't even <laughs> watch the game. <laughs> she said, I'm too nervous, I have to go outside. Very she couldn't bear to watch. Uh, but we, we all felt that. But, you know, we thought that we could do it. And, and, and the, the boys have done it. Indeed. There was that ownership. It's like everybody was just eager to see the Scorpions qualify. I mean, the, the buzz, like I said, I wish the cameras were there on us because just the way all of us were. And when the goal went in, yeah. my word, I, you know, they must have heard us two miles away. Everybody was shouting, screaming, stomping. The joy, the explosion of joy, the relief that, yes, the breakthrough. And of course, it proved to be the crucial breakthrough. Now, because now, the now, now, now that's a relief. And we just have one, week, one more game to go uh, against Congo in, 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 in Kinshasa. You can relax. It's more like go and go, go, go party and enjoy Kinshasa. Uh, absolutely. I mean, but what I would like to say, I mean, because I think, you know, His Excellency the President mentioned it about them staying focused and staying professional. Yes, you've qualified, but still go out there. Every time you wear the shirt, you're representing the Gambia. So don't go there in a kind of party mood. Yeah. Go there and put on a performance to show that, yes, you know, uh, we've qualified, but guess what? Yeah, we want to do even better. Yeah. You know, because if, if, if Gabon lose the next game and we win, we'll top the group. Exactly. We'll go, <laughs> like, we'll go 13 points. This is it. You know, yeah. we will top the group. So, you know, there's still something to play for. And that's what I would like to see from the players, that focus, which is His Excellency the President mentioned. If, if there's something that the younger generation uh, could learn from this people, what, what would that be? It's um, don't give up. Uh, there were times of adversity when it looked like the team would not make it. And also, I think one of the things that I particularly like is that even some of the players who did not make it into the squad they sent messages of support yeah. on Twitter on Facebook and so on and many of them even some, vet so some veteran uh, ex-footballers like of Idris Asongo and so many of them this is it and, and so to answer the question about what I would like to see young people I would like young people to see the kind of the patience the perseverance and the dedication it can take you a long way and if you have those things, particularly the patient, a lot of our, 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 our patients, a lot of our young people, they're very impatient. They want success today without yeah, working yeah, for it. Yeah. But these guys work for it. It's usually cut. <laughs> there are no shortcuts yeah. to success. Never. never work for never. it, work hard for it, and you will get it. You will get your just rewards and you'll get what you work for. Well, uh, my colleague Ansumana Isonyasi is still out on the streets. Well, Ansumana. Okay, well, Ansu Ansu Ansumana is, is still on the street, you know, sounding opinions of, of people. L like you said, uh, the, the younger generation should, should really emulate uh, the, the, the hard work of, this, of these players. Sure. I mean, at some point, uh, 
there was so much criticism about the selection process by the coach. I mean, we had some players who, who are said to be clubless. And right. he said experience matters. Sure. Did, did you see experience play any, any role in this thing? Even though we saw yeah, yes. the captain da Mourdan, yes. who is clubless at the moment, yes, the goalkeeper, Moru told the job, yeah. also out of club, but they were all very you know, critical. Uh, you know, when I had game. a discussion with my colleagues, Esso and, and, and Gajagar, about this, and it was for Q Sports, I yeah. mentioned what happened with the Brazil team of 1970. Mm -hmm. Pele was badly injured in the 1966 World Cup. He didn't play football for two years. Mm. And, you know, in those days, Brazil still had a dictatorship. So when the squad was being chosen for the 1970 World Cup, the dictator insisted that Pele had to be in the team. Um, imagine somebody who had not played, played for you know, years. and he told the coach, you either pick Pele or I sack <laughs> you, you know. And they were like, oh, he hasn't played. Pele ended up going to the 1970 World Cup and he was the star of that tournament. And the coach said something, and the, 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 the dictator, uh, I think it was Videla, he said something at the time which resonates now. He said, Pele might not have played. He said, but just having him mm. in the squad, yeah. and even if you put him on the pitch, other teams get scared straight yeah, away. Scared, yeah. He said Pele that, on the pitch alone is something You know, else, he said yeah. that alone, that yeah. experience alone yeah. is enough to actually galvanize. And so it proved to be. He might not have been a football man in terms of being a coach, but he was right. And that's what many coaches now use they say look what happened with brazil in 1970 bringing in players who are without a club but who have a certain presence and a set of respect from within the squad it is worth bringing them in and of course it's now justified by the qualification well like you said quite <laughs> quite <laughs> incredible <laughs> having the game <laughs> qualify but then uh, how do you see football in the absence of fans like you said you said they are the 12th month on the pitch you know, it's almost like it's, it's not the same game yeah. because you and I, um, we watch football now. You see the Premier League, you see the La Liga, La Liga yeah. Serie A. Yeah. You see a player score and he runs to an imaginary Ma crowd. Imaginary crowd. Uh, they're not there. Yeah. And, and, you know, crowds can, and, you know, a lot has been said. There have been many, many articles in the last two, three weeks saying that the reason Liverpool are not doing so well is because they miss the Anfield crowd. Mm. Imagine they had gone so many years without losing a single match at Anfield. They've now lost three in one season when they hadn't lost in how many years, you know, and that crowd, you, I, I've been there, you know, two years ago I was in Anfield when they played uh, Southampton and, and no, Liverpool beat them 4-0. The crowd really can galvanise you. But I think COVID is forcing us to have to live without crowds, to have to play football without crowds. But it's, it's almost, it's changing the game in, in, in some ways because, you know, sometimes crowds can influence a decision. You know, somebody gets fouled, and depending on how loud the crowd screams, it could be a yellow card or a red card. You know, the referees are human and they react to that. That is missing. So there are certain things that not having a crowd actually can make quite a difference in football. As, and and as sometimes it, it can also put pressure on the players. Like a game like today, how crucial this game was. Imagine the stadium filled to its brain and then yes. you're having those players missing some of those chances. It could somehow you know, put pressure on the players and they might even lose focus easily. You know what? Today <laughs> was a bit of a scrappy yeah. game. <laughs> and I think even though the crowd were not there, I think in the heads of the players, they, they were there. I was there so. <laughs> they knew. And, and so it, it, it affected their performance. But they were professional enough to get the job done. And that's all you could ask of them. And, and they got the job done. And Angola was, was very disciplined, huh? They were seriously disciplined. And you and I know yeah. they got us worried yeah. uh, on occasion. You know, not enough to think, oh, you know, they could draw or win this game, but enough to keep us yeah. on our toes. Exactly. And that was really, really crucial. They were very disciplined. And I think actually they would have gone away quite disappointed to have lost this game. But yeah, I think Gambia definitely deserved a win. So on overall, do you think Gambia was above Angola, even though we won them in, 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 the, in the first leg? Yes, I mean, we beat them in the first leg, and um, I think that galvanized them coming here because they got a lot of criticism at home. I have lots of friends who are, Ango who are Angolans, and in fact, when I go back <laughs> to my desk, I'm going <laughs> to be know, teasing. You, you could have, could have a lot <laughs> of messages. I'm going to be teasing them because there'll be lots of messages because I told them before the match that, that Gambia would win, but I think Gambia deservedly won. I mean, the, the two victories over Angola were not flukes. They were deserved victories, and today's uh, falls into that bracket as well. Gambia definitely did what they had to do to win, and that was just stay focused, play to their, you know, their strengths, and hey, 1-0 um, is a very, very sweet victory. In, in terms of preparation, I mean, we know that uh, as the tournament approaches, friendly games are always very important. What would be your advice in terms of you know, having these regular friendly games uh, ahead of the tournament? Oh, uh, I think they're crucial um, because I think it gives a coach uh, an opportunity to test some players to try out other players. And as I was saying, I think some players from the under 20 squad, from what I saw, might even graduate. Yeah. Um, to, you know, because some of them are playing regular football. 
um, and they might even displace, you know. Uh, in fact, in fact we, we had one who was invited in the 50 provisional squad, Modo Bojang. That's right. Of Bekama United, but was later was, dropped. Was dropped from the 25. Yeah. Yes. So um, I would like to see lots of uh, friendlies and against very good teams because that's the only way you're going to test yourself. I remember in the 60s when I was growing up, um, Germany and Brazil, the uh, national teams, they used to play against um, provincial sides. Yeah. Uh, and you know they'd end up scoring 20 or 30 <laughs> goals <laughs> because they wanted to give their forwards confidence of scoring lots and lots of goals but that kind of policy is no longer used anymore so I would like to see them arrange friendlies against really really tough sides to test themselves because if you're going to go far in a tournament you're going to have to beat good sides you're not going to go far with luck you know and that's you know Madagascar uh, we keep saying yeah. did that in the last tournament before the tournament they played really really tough sides you know they played Egypt they played Cameroon in friendlies yeah, don't you don't know. worry about the scores you, you uh, can see yeah, yeah. you're trying to test your you're trying to test yeah. yourself and when they got good results in those games people said ah it's a fluke yeah. it's because it was friendly yeah. but when the real afcon came they, they showed right, that team. they had done the right thing by taking on those tough games and that's what we need to do but, but having the coach invited 50 50 players in that professional list it seems gambia need not to worry about f about talents it seems we have a lot of professionals outside the country i mean what is even more remarkable <laughs> is that even from that 50, there were players left out. Yeah. And that's why I'm really hopeful that imagine you could pick a score of 50 and people are still saying, what about so and so? Yeah, awesome. You know, why, why didn't you pick this person? Why didn't you pick that person? And so, yes, you know, the future looks really, really bright. And honestly, I keep saying this, we have to seize the moment. I'll give you a quick example. In 1974, 1978, Holland got to the World Cup final twice. And in fact, historically, it's the only time that a team in getting to the final of the World Cup has actually ended up facing the it's host nation, the host nation. The host nation. So they faced Germany or West Germany as they were in 1974 and they faced Argentina and they lost. They had a great crop of players. And guess what? Everybody kept saying, ah, next World Cup. They've never won it. Holland have never won it. <laughs> And, and if, if you look at it, I mean, w w when the team made that announcement of those 50 professional players, some people were asking the question, why will a coach invite 50 players? And I remember when we had that <laughs> conversation, you were like, you know, the coach is acting smart because, yeah, you know, because of this COVID restriction, some clubs might not be willing to release their players. And That's then we see that case in the case of Modo Baro. Quite. Yeah. Modo Baro was in the 50, 50 professional list, but he wasn't released by his by club, his so yeah. he, he couldn't come. That's right. And as you rightly say, you know, when the squad was chosen, I, I was saying to you, because I'd been reading in the papers that some clubs around Europe and other places, even in Asia, were saying they weren't going to release players. And so you needed to get as many people as possible that you could test in every position. Because yeah. if somebody is pulled out by their club, what do you do? You have to have a ready replacement. And that's Thank what you so doing. much. Thank you so much, Mr. Ade. Well, viewers, with that, we come to the end of this live broadcast, a special day uh, in the country, a day when the Gambia has finally qualified to its maiden Afghan tournament. Uh, on behalf of the production team, my colleagues Ansumana Esonyasi, Modu Gaja out, uh, out in the field. And of course, the President of the Republic, His Excellency. Thank you so much for speaking to us here. And we hope your government and, of course, through the Ministry of Youth and Sports, will give more support to sports development in this country. Until then, congratulations to the Scorpions. We wish you all the best.